will now call this meeting of the Jacksonville City Council to order. I want to welcome everyone who's come out to the meeting tonight. We've got a whole house full of folks tonight. Uh, also have uh, the folks watching on G10, we welcome you also. Uh, we're going to stand for a mo in a moment for the Pledge of Allegiance, and we're also going to have the invocation by our city attorney, uh, Mr. John Carter. And if you would at this time, please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks as always. We give you thanks for this beautiful day, for the blessings that you so graciously bestow upon us individually and as our city of Jacksonville. We give thanks for all the benefits and privileges that we have as Americans, and especially the privilege to vote, as many of us did yesterday. We give thanks for all those persons who offered themselves for public service, and we especially pray for those persons who were elected. Whether they're continuing in their particular office or new in office, we pray that they will strive and be successful in serving the common good. We give thanks for those who are serving tonight and have served in the past that we may have these privileges and freedoms as Americans. Keep all of them safe and secure and bless our anxious families. And as always, we ask your guidance and your direction to be with our mayor and with our council. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Right, Council, you have, each of you should have at your place a uh, copy of tonight's uh, proposed agenda. This time I would like to make a real quick comment before I present it for adoption. It, it's, uh, I wish to uh, ask all the members of the Council here uh, uh, to have this matter of the uh, Lejeune Green Wave, which I think is item number uh, six on your agenda for tonight, uh, moved or delayed at least until the November 18th 2014 meeting in order to give uh, our staff time to meet with uh, Mr. John Sennett, uh, an architect, uh, prior to the uh, letter to the editor in the Jacksonville Daily News today. I spoke uh, directly with Congressman Jones yesterday and uh, we agreed that we would uh, meet, uh, that we would meet, that our city staff would meet with the architect uh, to discuss a proposal. Uh, therefore, if you all agree with me or agree with the uh, motion to approve the agenda uh, with item six deferred until November 18th, I would certainly appreciate that action on your part. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Yes. Please, Mr. Willingham. I would prefer to leave it on the agenda and um, entertain a motion to defer it to a later date. I'm not going to be here on the 18th because I'll be representing the city as an uh, alternate delegate along with um, um, my, uh, my colleague and I would like to have input to that uh, decision. And um, I'll make some comments now if the board is not, council is not in favor of defer, uh, deferring or taking it up uh, as an agenda item. Give me uh, just a moment. I'd like to turn to Dr. Woodruff. Uh, is there any concerns that the staff might have to delay it until the following meeting after the 18th? Is that going to cause any uh, problems administratively as far as permitting, funding, or anything of that nature? I'm going to defer that to Ron Massey. He has followed the time schedule a little closer. Ron, do you know of any difficulties that if we move to the first meeting in December? The one thing we're not sure of, for sure of, is the funding. The funding is uh, basically under the old transportation funding program. Uh, the legislation changed that. This particular project under the old program is supposed to be done by the end of fiscal year 15. 
So the only thing that happens here is, you know, nobody has said at DOT how much flexibility there is with the funding to extend beyond 30 September uh, 2015. So it, there's an uncertainty on the part of that, but that's can that's we uh, can we probably uh, clear up some of the uncertainty if we contact DOT and maybe get a uh, uh, I guess uh, some type of uh, we can certainly agreement do that. with them. Yes, sir. What we can certainly do, and given that, uh, why don't we instead of uh, saying that this matter is going to be moved to a specific date, you just ask council to withdraw this from an agenda item tonight that we notify the public that this may be on the November 18th agenda if we find we, that there are issues relative to funding. Otherwise, it, it is your intention to place it on the first meeting in December. Would that be a satisfactory motion? Mr. Willingham? No. Okay. Um, I think we need to proceed with it, and I don't mind uh, stating on the record why. I would prefer, though, that we did it as an agenda item as opposed to taking it off the agenda and entertaining a motion at that time to defer it. You have a motion to second on the floor, Mayor, so to you and those persons who made the motion to second to resolve that if that's in the intent that they want to do that. Just for my clarification, Mr. Wilkinson, would you please explain that to me again, exactly what your proposal is? That we just continue with the agenda, adopt the agenda as presented and not take it off the agenda. And when we reach it as agenda item number six, then we entertain discussion and whether we're going to defer it. Okay, so you're going to withdraw the withdraw, yes, sir. second and the... Uh, all right. I'll make okay. a motion we adopt the agenda. Second. We have a motion to adopt the agenda and a second. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. So we have an adopted agenda. Okay. Next, we have the approval of our minutes. Uh, we have a meeting that was a special meeting that occurred on October 14, 2014, and we have a regular meeting that occurred on October 21, 2014. Mr. Mayor, move for approval of the minutes of the October 14th special meeting and the October 21st regular meeting as presented. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. All right. So we have a few presentations to make tonight, and I'm going to come around front here. And uh, we'll s we got about six of them, I believe. And um, we'll come around front and uh, do that. Okay. Just in case there's fine print, I'm going to take my trusty reading glasses. With me. recognition of the volunteers of the Lowe's Heroes program. And I would like to ask Mr. Brian Levy, the store manager from Lowe's on Western Boulevard. Mr. Wayne Hart, the store manager of Lowe's at Freedom Village. Mr. James Barber, chair of the uh, Lowe's Heroes program. And any other volunteers that have come out tonight, and I see we have quite a few. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. How's everybody doing this evening? Mm -hmm. Good. I like your shirts. <laughs> Each year, the employees of Lowe's on Western Boulevard and Lowe's at Freedom Village uh, select a public service project 
Uh, this year, the two stores combined for a project to paint and refurbish the Jacksonville Depot at Riverwalk Crossing Park. Over the last three weeks, employees of the Lowe's stores have donated over 200 hours of time to scrape, paint, and improve the depot. Cost of materials were approximately $5,000, and the work inclu including, included repainting all of the wood, removing and replacing damaged wood, refurbishment of the benches, and replacement of stage carpet. Uh, the city would like to express our gratitude and appreciation to the Lowe's Heroes Program and Lowe's employees who gave their time and talent to paint and rejuvenate the city train depot at Riverwalk Crossing Park. And y'all did a great job, by the way. I'm going to buy there and take a look at it. It's really good. <laughs> There's some talented folks. And I'm going to give, uh, give a couple of these here. I have one for everybody. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor, if I may, uh, about two months ago, James, James stepped forward. He's the handsome guy with the uh, handlebar mustache. James contacted me on behalf of Lowe's Heroes and said that they had come together and wanted to do one joint project for the city. He and I toured about a dozen locations, and you know my idea of a volunteer program was about this big, and his idea of a volunteer program was unbelievably large. And when we got to the train depot, he looked at it, and he looked at it, and he walked around it, and about 30 minutes later, he said, this is the project for us. And I can tell you, these folks put out, like, a, like the mayor said, over 200 hours of volunteer time. These people were up on ladders 25 feet in the air. I guess technically, James, it was 23 and a half feet in the air because of a 24-foot ladder. They were up on scaffolding. The young ladies that you see here were scraping benches and doing spraying. Others did painting. Everybody, I think, did uh, pulling of staples where we had put the chicken wire up to keep the pigeons out. But if you have not been by the train depot, you should go by. And I will tell you, as a staff, our facility maintenance folks greatly appreciated the fact that y'all took on that project, so they did not have to. <laughs> but as the manager, I will tell you, you saved the taxpayers of this city. Our estimate was almost $10,000. And I will tell you, we thank you very much. Thanks again. Appreciate appreciate the work that you did. And if you got some spare time, I know there's a house on Northwoods Drive that needs some work too. <laughs> uh, the next item on our agenda here as a recognition is for our outstanding business appearance. And I'm not sure. I didn't see Alicia Thompson come in from. Uh, Stevenson, I'm not Stevenson, oh boy, that's going to get me in trouble there. <laughs> From Don Williamson, Nissan. Uh, Alyssa's not here.
Next, I'd like to call my good friend up here, Dr. Marshall Frank, and his wife who's come with him tonight. Doc, good to see you. <clears throat> Dr. Marshall Frank has served as the medical director of Onslow County Emergency Services since 1994. Over those 20 years, Dr. Frank was instrumental in the development of the city's first responder program, which began November 5th of 1996 with the fire department, responding only to incidents of chest pain, difficulty breathing, and motor vehicle crashes with injuries. The growth of our community over the years created a vital need to extend the city's first responder program. Dr. Frank was instrumental in providing medical expertise and guidance in advancing the agency's standards, standard op of operations to uh, respond to these emergencies. The Jacksonville Public Safety now provides emergency medical responses to calls for seizures, labor and delivery, heart attacks, allergic reactions, drug overdose, gunshots and stabbings. Dr. Frank's foresight in considering the needs of the citizens and visitors during a medical emergency is commendable. His extraordinary commitment to emergency medical responses in our community has truly enhanced the quality of life for those that live here in our community. And Dr. Frank, on top of all that, works, you work all the time in the emergency room at Onslow Memorial Hospital. We go back a long ways. We've known each other since we were kids, and you always give to this community, and I really appreciate your dedication and, and loyalty to the community and the service you provide your fellow man. And I have a little something here for you I would like to present you with. And this is a uh, print of uh, the Jacksonville Center for Public Safety uh, to present to you. Even got police cars and fire trucks in front of it. And got your name on it. Thank you so much, Dr. Yes, Frank. Thank, Thank you. you very much. I, feel, I told Dr. Frank I felt real honored to be able to see him two times within the, within the same week and not under a medical con uh, situation. You do a great job there. I really appreciate it. The next thing I'd like to do tonight is I have some folks that have put in some time and effort and uh, have actually gone through and completed our Citizen Academy here in Jacksonville. Uh, and I would like to ask Carmela, if George, if you would come up here and help me out. Carmela is the uh, coordinator of our community programs here at Jacksonville, and I'm going to let you hold this. Thank you, Carmela. The Jacksonville Citizen Academy is designed to offer city residents who are interested in becoming more involved in local government and its activities an opportunity to learn more about what city government does and offers direct insight into the operations of our city government. The Fall 2004 Citizen Academy met for two hours weekly for five weeks, covering, a, a, number one, an overview of uh, city government departments, budget, and elected officials, two, public services, three, recreation and parks, four, public safety to include, include police and fire, and five, the development services and transit. Tonight, we're going to present certificates to all those who graduated from the academy. And I think everybody that went graduated, so they all get diplomas. So I would like to ask them to come up. I'm going to call them out. And if you'll come up, please, and, st and stay up here long enough so we can get a photograph of a group, that would be great. So first off, I'd like to ask Melissa Bryson. That's your sister? Huh. She just saw the resemblance. Is John. John. You don't even know. Okay. 
<laughs> Say it for us. Satoot. Satoot. Thank you, Sean. Adrian Clark. Adrian's not here. Link Cook. Glad you glad you enjoyed it. Yasnia Cranford. That is Yasnia Cranford. Rosemary Dow. Raymond Dry. Tracy Evans. Megan Hare. I want to mention Priscilla Gallagher, who's unable to be here tonight, but Priscilla Gallagher. Melissa Kennedy. Doug Lang. <laughs> Philip Law. <laughs> Grover Lewis the third. Oh, there you are. Megan McHugh. I have to give you, oh, this, you count this towards surface learning too, don't you? Okay, I'm getting extra credit. <clears throat> Megan's one of my criminal justice students at Coastal Carolina. Yes. Joe Normando uh, went through the academy. He's not here tonight but we want to recognize Joe, Kelly Parker also, and Giselle Purnell. All three were unable to be here, but congratulations to them also for making it, th or going through the academy, not making it through, but going through the academy. Uh, Albert Potts. <laughs> yes, sir, you gotta keep eye on me, don't you? Okay, Anita. Anita Potts. Thank you so much for doing it. We enjoyed it. And thank you for making Gail Quirk. James Quirk. Deandra Stills was unable to be here tonight. Patricia Thorne wasn't able to be here tonight. But I do have Brenda Vega.
And last but not least, Jeff Wilkie. Sorry, Jeff, you're not last but not least. Mr. Zachary Hare. This is the 2014 graduating class of the Jacksonville Citizen Academy. Let's give them all a round of hand. driving a garbage truck, step to the front row. <laughs> Those who actually got to ride in the back of the police car, step to the second row. Go to me to Next, we are going to have some life-saving awards for some of our public safety personnel. And at this time, I would like to call forward police officer Nicholas Deming. Hey, Nick. Police officer J.T. Miller. How you doing? Police officer Amanda Smith. Driver, operator, John Romero. John, good to see you, buddy. Firefighter, James Rarden. Hey, James. Telecommunicator, Sarah Anderson. Telecommunicator Hannah Floyd. Hey, Hannah. <clears throat> and also Chief Mike Yanero, who's the Director of Public Safety, and Deputy Chief Spencer Lee, uh, Fire Department. And I would like to all, uh, also add that uh, Police Officer David Chandler would be here tonight, but was. Uh, uh, unfortunately had a, a conflict in scheduling. And you can imagine these folks can have conflicts in scheduling a lot of times because they do a lot of stuff. On, no, on September 22nd, 2014, Jacksonville Public Safety personnel responded to a medical emergency in which an 18-year-old student was having trouble breathing at Coastal Carolina Community College. Telecommunicator Sarah Anderson immediately dispatched personnel to respond, and while personnel were en route, she transferred the call uh, for EMS dispatch. Upon arrival, an immediate assessment was made, and officers Deming, Miller, and Chandler began CPR. Driver John Romero confirmed that there was no pulse and the subject was not breathing on his own. Firefighters James Rarden assumed ventilation with a bag valve mask. <clears throat> During the rescue, Officer Amanda Smith 
cleared the scene of students and onlookers to allow for expedited emergency medical response. By remaining on the line to the monitor, the MS call, telecommunicators Hannah Floyd and Sarah Anderson were able to relay critical information to responding units with no medical delays for the victim receiving critical care. Medic 4 arrived and continued advanced life-saving techniques resulting in the victim breathing on his own and regaining consciousness. The victim was transported to Oslo Memorial Hospital and made a full recovery. The city would like to mention the outstanding efforts of our county EMS paramedics in this rescue, Captain Bobby Price, Nathaniel Eastfold and Jeffrey Reimer. Are any of them here tonight? Okay. The immediate response and life-sustaining efforts by these eight public safety employees resulted in preventing a tragedy. In recognition of their efforts, I am honored to, s to present these life-saving awards tonight. Again, another example of our fine public safety personnel that work here in the city of Jacksonville and their constant vigilance and caring and just dedication to what they do for a living. You know, uh, did you get into this job to make money? No, sir. <laughs> I didn't think so. I didn't either when I got into it. Uh, but we, we do get a lot of reward, don't we, by, by what we do, by staying diligent, performing our duties, and, and taking positive actions. And thank you very much for what you do. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it while I did it. But... I used to love I used to love doing that job too, but I, I'm glad we got a good, great group that took over for for my generation of police officers that went forward. Next, I would like to ask Councilmember Willingham if he would come down and help me with this one. Uh, this is a a very nice award here. Uh, this is for the 2014 Housing uh, North Carolina Award. Um, I'm very pleased, and I also would like to have Lily, I know Lily Gray was here, our, our community development folks. Mar, uh, Marsha Wright's also here. Colonel Grover Lewis, I know you're here. We've already had you up here one time. It's on our board. And any other of our community development advisory board me members that are here? Did I miss somebody? Okay. Oh, there you are. I'm very pleased to announce the city, that the City of Jacksonville Community Development Division has received the prestigious 2014 Housing North Carolina Award by the North Carolina Housing Finance Agency. 
The city's Community Development Division received the award in recognition of the successful implementation of the Downtown Housing Initiative, a public-private partnership designed to revitalize Jacksonville and its downtown. The award was presented on October 15, 2014 during the North Carolina Housing Finance Agency's annual luncheon, uh, awards luncheon held in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, and we want to thank Council Member Willingham for attending the conference and accepting the award on behalf of the award on behalf of the city of Jacksonville. We also want to thank uh, our Community Development Advisory Committee members, Marsha Wright and Colonel Grover Lewis, for attending uh, as well. And I'm going to turn it over to Council Member Willingham because I know you have a lot some comments that you'd like to make. I made my comments at the um, awards dinner, and we would like to hear from Colonel Lewis at this time. <laughs> well, thank you, uh, Councilman. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you would have been proud of, uh, of your, your staff and uh, the city of Jacksonville for the efforts that they put forth. And uh, uh, Lily and Tracy have been doing just a bang up job. I believe this is their second award that uh, I've, I've known about here this year. Uh, so the city can, can be proud of uh, the staff that they have here. Uh, and, and they represented uh, uh, Jacksonville very well. And uh, I want to thank the, uh, the, the mayor and the councilman for allowing me to be a part of it also. So thank you much. Uh. I, I would just like to say thank you very much. And I have to commend you on the efforts that y'all have made uh, because downtown doesn't look like old downtown much anymore. You, you've made it sparkle down there is all I can say, and, and you continue to do so and appreciate all the efforts and time that you put into this. Thank you so much. A lot of times when uh, you think you think about things aren't going too well and everything, you know, you know how it gets when you're doing the people's work. Sometimes you get a little, uh, you know, down in the dump. Sometimes just all you have to do is take a nice ride downtown and, and look and see what all has been accomplished there, and it sure puts you in a lot better frame of mind. I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we're going to go ahead and uh, go to our first section. Well, first off, I know a lot of you have come here for the the uh, presentations tonight. So as I normally do, I'm going to take a little pause right now. And I know some of you have got other things you have to do tonight and go to and go back to work and stuff like that. So I'm going to take a brief call, uh, pause. I want to thank all of you for coming out tonight. And I really appreciate your service to this city. Thank you very much.
so we're uh, back in business here. Oh, wait a minute. Time out. <laughs> Where do you go? We're gonna stand. We're gonna stand by just a moment before we resume. We had a very good participation in the uh, Citizens Academy. Great. That was, a, that was a good turnout. Had about 30 participants. Uh, we are considering having a spring. Normally we have one a year, depending on interest. But again, we had about 30 participants this year. And certainly the staff is pleased to show them the what we call the backstage area of what really goes on with city government. Right. All right, we shall uh, go ahead and resume the meeting here. Um, we come now to our first session of public comment for the evening, and I haven't seen the sheet. I don't, I do have a sheet here. Uh, I don't have anyone signed up on the sheet. Has anyone come in since this, it was taken up that wishes to speak at public comment? Okay. Um, Let's go to uh, the first. Uh, first off, we need to adopt our consent items, our street consent items, and uh, I would entertain a motion to adopt those at this time. So you got it. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Here, none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Okay. Next, we have uh, a couple of public hearings, and. <clears throat> The first public hearing here, just a second. This is on a uh, map amendment rezoning from uh, office and industrial to uh, community. What is that? Office and institutional. Okay. To office and institutional. On CC commercial corridor. Commercial corridor. This is 1408 Western Boulevard. And Amanda, I mean, Abigail Barman, our planner. Sorry about oh. that, Abigail. Abigail Barman, our planner, will be presenting this item. Abigail? We got a whole list of new acronyms with the UDO. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is a rezoning from office and institutional to commercial corridor. The site is right near Jacksonville's Commons. This application was submitted by, by Parker and Associates for Southern Crescent LLC. Here's an aerial of the site. You'll see it's undeveloped currently. Here is um, driving past the site, looking directly at it. Across the street, also undeveloped. This is looking towards Western. This is looking back towards the commons. This is currently zoned O and I and was recently part of the um, commons. It's now a separate parcel and separated. And the, oh, sorry, that was the future land use. The future land use shows it as park. And just as you saw with the update that you had, we would recommend changing this future land use to regional commercial to reflect the um, pink that would be uh, along to the site that it is being recombined with. The existing zoning is office institutional. Proposed is commercial corridor. And if you look at the overview, it's a proposed expansion with the car dealership there. We don't have any plans on the development, but they have purchased the property and looking to rezone it from the existing O&I to the commercial corridor. Staff recommends approval of this based on findings of fact A, C and D being found in the affirmative. B would be found in the affirmative with the update to the future land use map. And also that the rezoning advances the public interest and it does so by allowing the development in the proposed manner. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Council, any questions of uh, Ms. Barman? Mr. Mayor. 
this this doesn't really apply to to the rezoning per se it really applies to the site plan but I'm going to ask because I did have a citizen call me today and ask me about this um, we're going to uh, it may it may be something that mr. Parker has to answer but are we going to have to have a, uh, a retention pond on the property or is the existing detention pond next door sufficient that and the reason what brings it up is we're, we're going to have, if we have to have a detention pond, we're next to a recreation area. There was some, some concerns expressed about safety for children and just wanted to make sure that if we had to put one that it is fenced in some way. I know it's not a rezoning question, but. Uh, yes, if you don't mind, I'll address that. Uh, yes, there will be a stormwater uh, retention pond. Technically, it will not be on the parcel that is subject to the rezoning. The retention pond at the request of the city, meaning the city manager's office, not, not you as the elected officials, was to build an aesthetic amenity and it would be located just above the word subject. Abigail, if you're technically better than I am, which I'm sure you are, uh, that location would actually be on city property. The detention pond will be designed so it can not only handle the runoff requirements for the development of the subject property, but will also be designed to handle the runoff from additional parking lots or impervious surfaces that you later approve on the, uh, on the area which we commonly refer to as Richard Ray Park. The design of that was intended to be more of an amenity it was not our intentions to have it be fenced. What we were hoping to do was design it in such a way that there would actually be a vertical area where people would literally walk out closer into the pond. Now that part would have a railing so someone would not step off. The concept would be that that could become an area where public events could occur with the backdrop of the retention pond, which we believe will be wet uh, most of the year. Mr. Parker's also designed it so that it could have a fountain installed similar to the one in Lake Bittner. On the other hand, that is a decision that City Council would make at a future date. But it, it is our intention, as we negotiated it, to have this as an amenity versus the pond that you see to the lower left of this pond, which is more of an institutional industrial style pond. Uh, we would hope that it would be used very similar in fashion to the way that Lake Bittner is used. The, the, uh, the phone call uh, made me think about it, and, and we are right up against a children's play area. Yes, sir. And it will not have the same visibility that, it, that, it, that uh, the, the, the pond out front would have over by common. So concerned about safety, children's safety here. Well, certainly, at the end of the day, those are things we can bring back to City Council for final approval regarding the design. Uh, technically, the property where the pond will be located is not the property where you're being asked to rezone. But as always, if Council would like for us to bring back the design of the pond, we will certainly do that. Any other questions of Ms. Barman? Thank you, Abigail. So this time, I'm going to uh, open up a public hearing in this matter. I'm going to uh, recess the regular council meeting, open the public hearing. Uh, is there anyone present that wishes to speak this matter? Mr. Williams, if you would please step forward and uh, give your name and address for the record, please. Good evening. I'm Bob Williams at 929 Commons Drive North, and uh, I'm a resident of that area. I am uh, a little bit concerned over the uh, the sale of the property and the manner it was sold, uh, number one. But uh, since that's already happened and I missed the sale of that, I am concerned over changing the, uh, the uh, category that we're going to change it to. Now, understandably, and uh, Mr. Warden had already announced uh, there that uh, uh, my concerns with regards to the water retention plan, or the pond rather, uh, that is a concern. My grandchildren go to that area. I see a lot of other grandchildren uh, and other children in that area playing in that unsupervised. Uh, their uh, parents or guardians are frequently in that park and let them roam around that area. So that's a concern that I have. The other concern I have with that particular parcel is uh, outside the sale of uh, the property to a private entity in there, 
the undeveloped uh, CC that's up there on the uh, left side is actually mostly developed. And I, I'm not sure why at that time that the, uh, the person didn't, or, or Marine Chevrolet did not go ahead. And, there we go, you can see it on the undeveloped CC. That's actually mostly developed at this point over the last uh, year, year and a half. So I'm not sure why we didn't uh, allow them to go that way or they didn't uh, seek to go that way. Although they have expressed no uh, immediate plans to build that out, uh, they wouldn't have purchased it if they weren't going to build it out. So I'm concerned about this, not uh, only the safety issue, uh, as a member of the school board, you know, children are our priority. Number two is a private citizen. And living in that community, uh, we already have uh, a lot of traffic that's going through the area. Uh, this is going to increase the traffic area, and I'd be concerned any further projects that we might be considering and building out in that area. Uh, we only have uh, two mechanisms to get in from Western Boulevard at this particular time. And uh, until we can get the bypass built off of uh, the, the Western Extension going out around the Commons area, uh, this is a frequent area for people to go through. So those are just a couple of my major concerns with the project as it stands. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else present wishes to speak to this matter? Mr. Parker. Uh, just briefly, uh, this is um, a, obviously a request to extend the development of the Marine Chevrolet, which is a, um, or request to rezone the property so that Marine Chevrolet can expand. That's a logical expansion into this area um, and <clears throat> will allow for the expansion of a much needed uh, business that is actually locked it has no other location where it can expand and uh, and that is the reason for this request for this rezoning um, the the access to the site is at uh, the signal at the location of gateway and western um, as was mentioned the stormwater will be designed in that back corner nearest to the uh, existing stormwater pond it's actually a little farther over than Abigail uh, noted on the drawing. If this works, I will show you in this area. Well, I can't, it doesn't work. Um, but I just wanted to, to, uh, to point out a couple of things that, that this, this is actually for the expansion of the Marine Chevrolet. And I'd be glad to try to answer any other questions. Mr. Lazar has a question. Just as a question, John, is there any uh, opportunity to expand or uh, change the existing pond to facilitate the runoff? Is there no? There's actually without a, building a new one. There's a stream that is located uh, between uh, the back of the existing pond and the property line. Uh, it's a wetland stream oh. that's located in that area. We've set this uh, device up so that it's uh, a, as, as an amenity, um, much to mirror Lake Bittner, uh, so that it can uh, allow for a, uh, an area serving the city that would be approximately twice the area that is to be developed by the Marine Chevrolet expansion. Uh, and will actually turn runoff from Gateway South into that device at the very beginning, and then could be substituted with other runoff later. But there's really not a, an area to expand the pond in any other location. Any other questions? Thank you, sir. Anyone else present wishes to speak? At this time, I'm going to close the public hearing and reopen the council meeting. Uh, Council, you're being asked to consider the uh, uh, annexation or rezoning, sorry, the rezoning of this property. Well, Mayor Phillips, I'll make the motion to approve the rezoning uh, request based on the finding of facts A, C, and D being found in the affirmative and direct staff to update the CAMA plan, which will make the rezoning consistent and finding of fact B, affirmative finding that the rezoning advances the public interest by creating more development opportunities. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? 
just yeah I'm just uh, you know I guess uh, I'm a little embarrassed because I certainly voted to uh, in favor of the sale but I am concerned about the the safety when it was brought to my attention I kind of had one of those moments I said oh I hadn't considered it uh, so I'm I'm going to be uh, voting against it because I am concerned about the that the safety of the children playing in that that park area there so if I may uh, just make a comment uh, the council has directed uh, let me do it differently we will be very happy to bring back the concept plans for the park for the amenity pond so you can approve that I think you're really I'm not trying to change your mind mr. warden but there are really two issues here one is the use of the property the other is the safety of the pond <coughs> certainly your vote whichever way you want to make it uh, the staff though understands that council has a concern we will work on that and we will show you the slopes uh, I can say to you that certainly uh, the pond is not as obvious to the public as Lake Bittner the slopes that we have proposed for this pond though except where the vertical wall was proposed would be slopes that will be as gentle if not more gentle than those for Lake Bittner that doesn't mean a child can't get in trouble but I will pledge to you that as we work with Mr. Parker on this that we will be happy to bring back to you in workshop session the actual designs of the ponds for you to consider and this is and like you say this is further rezoning we're asking they're asking to have the property rezoned so uh, any other discussion Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Uh, that brings us to agenda item number five, and this is a public hearing on a voluntary annexation petition for Bailey and Fuller Properties, LLC. And Mr. Massey will be presenting this item. Mayor and Council, the voluntary annexation position, uh, petition was received from Chris Bailey on behalf of Bailey and Fuller Properties, LLC for a 2.468 acre parcel that is contiguous to the city limit boundaries. The tract is located at the corner of Richlands Highway and Yop Road. Future plans for the property include recombination of this 2.468 uh, acre parcel with two adjacent parcels for the development of eight to 10 commercial businesses, including a 12,157 square foot PetSmart store. The <clears throat> financial analysis shows a positive net cash flow over the five year period of $116,000. Staff recommends the council adopt the annexation ordinance as presented. Council, any questions of Mr. Massey? Thank you. I'm going to uh, recess the regular council meeting and open up a public hearing in this matter. Is there anyone present who wishes to speak in this matter? If so, please raise your hand. Okay, no one wants to speak, so I'm gonna close the public hearing and reconvene the, the meeting. Uh, and Councilor, you're being asked to consider the annexation ordinance. Move to adopt the ordinance. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? The motion carries. This brings us to agenda item number six. This is the Lejeune Greenway and Trail location. And uh, Mr. Dr. Woodruff will be presenting this item. As you will recall, at the request of Congressman Jones, you convened a public hearing on October the 14th. At that time, you took testimony from those in favor and those opposed to the location. During that hearing, uh, Architect Senate, who has done a lot of the work as far as the memorials in the Grove, I'm sorry, in the Memorial Gardens, uh, made a presentation and in it he suggested an alternative route. I can tell you that shortly after that meeting, we met with the Department of Transportation and they and their consultant analyzed the route that Mr. Senate was proposing. Generally, that route which Mr. Senate was proposing is immediately behind and running parallel to 
the curb line of 24. Tonight I can report to you that the consultant verifies that that route can be built. I can also report to you that any route can be built. There are consequences to what you build. What the consultant's report says is that there is sufficient clearance between the back of the curb and the head wall of the culvert that goes under 24. There's 23 feet. The trail is 14 feet in width. Because of the angle of fall at the edge of the culvert, basically 90 degrees, if you were to put the path at that location, you will be required to install a railing 42 inches high across that culvert. The report also showed that if you continue what I'm going to call out of town, you will have to increase the amount of fill dirt because the shoulder there is only eight feet wide before it in turn falls off at about a 45 degree angle. So you could once again widen that path to 14 feet by bringing in fill dirt. If you do that, you will have to go through an environmental, per an environmental permitting process that is estimated to take six months. Likewise, unless you take the slope and significantly flatten it out, you will once again have to put in a railing to protect the public as they use the path. The bottom line of the consultant's report said, yes, you could build it. The consequences are time and the fact you would have to install a handrail of over 150 feet in length and that would be 42 inches in height. The concern that the staff continues to have with that route is the fact that a handrail in that location would block the visibility just as the handrail on the trail as it crosses Northeast Creek blocks the view of the bay. The other purpose though, or the other question is not constructability. As I said before, with technology and with money, we can build anything. The question is, where should you put it? If you put it out where Mr. Senate has proposed, it will function as a bypass so that people on the trail will go from point A to point Z. It will not enter the gardens themselves. If that is your goal, then that's what we can do. If on the other hand, your goal is to have a purpose to encourage people to visit so that as they go through the memorials, they will reflect on the 273 lives lost that day and the 56,000 plus lives that were lost in the war in Vietnam and the thousands of lives that were lost 9-11 and the other contributions that the Monford Point Marines and others have made and eventually the Museum of the Marine will be there. Then your decision should be to place that route where the staff, the Marine base, the Marine Corps, I should say, and the Department of Transportation has recommended as well as your Beirut Advisory Committee. Tonight, the matter is on your agenda. And with that, I'll be happy to answer questions. Um, of course, we do not know what plan that Mr. Senate is put, putting forth at this time. Is that correct? Uh, well, Mr. Senate has put forward two proposals that we have analyzed over the last several months. One was about three months ago. We explained the exact same impacts of that route. That route was basically much closer to the back of the memorial. It would have required a bridge. It would have had the same handrail impacts. It would have had filling. Mr. Senate is now proposing a location immediately adjacent to the thoroughfare and I've described that impact. We're assuming that the proposal that Mr. Senate and the Congressman would like for us to discuss with Mr. Senate is the route that he brought forward on October the 24th and that is the route, I'm sorry, October 14th and that is the route that I've just explained to you. Okay. When we, uh, when we do this analysis of the whatever uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Senate uh, puts forward uh, this this project has already been funded and permitted is that not correct 
That is correct. The, the okay. project is ready to build. Right. What we will need is the uh, easement from the uh, Department of Defense, and that is in the process of being signed, right. and we will need the final clearance from the Federal Highway Department and, of course, the North Carolina Department of Transportation. Easement has actually been received and recorded. Okay. Good. So we have an easement for the trail as designed, which council is, you know, has seen. And uh, the only thing we need is final approval from the Department of Transportation, which authorizes the funding. But, you know, I, I think that, you know, when uh, Mr. Senate, whichever plan it is he wishes to put forward, I, I assume that you've arranged some type of meeting yes, sir. with him to discuss this. Uh, one of the important things here is, is going to be the workability of the plan. Is it going to do what, you know, we've intended to accomplish all along, and that's to bring visibility and, and uh, to, the, uh, to the monuments. If it's something that's going to obscure it, then that flies in the face of what our initial uh, intent was years ago when we started building these memorials, correct? That is correct. Okay. The other, the other side of it, too, is uh, you're talking about doing bridges and, uh, uh, or handrails or rails and, and bringing in field dirt and all this. Is this going to add cost to this project? Yes, sir. It would add cost to the project. And Those the considerable costs would have cost to be that has not been accounted for in the funding, and it's too late to account for that. Is that not correct? Uh, it would add cost to the project. It is not currently in the budget funds that have been approved by the NCDOT. <laughs> or by the Federal Highway Department, nor by the city. So there's a lot of variables going on here. So I think, Mayor, the, the fair thing to say is if the proposal Mr. Senate wants to share with us on Monday when the staff and the DOT staff meets with them, if that is the proposal which he gave on October the 14th, we believe that that has been objectively studied, not by city staff, but by an NCDOT consultant you were provided a copy of that report. I have testified to you today the outcome of that report. That report was also provided to Congressman Jones' office. It is our hope that Congressman Jones took the time to read that report. In the end, the request on your agenda tonight is either to give direction to the staff to award the, or direct the staff to proceed with the bidding process or to postpone. One thing we did find, Anthony Prince, who is the person who is our actual project manager on this, called Ron a few minutes ago. Ron, would you please testify relative to time period and permits? Yeah, Anthony uh, has recommended that we move forward with the project as soon as possible because of the limitations that I mentioned earlier on the, the funding and our ability to get the project constructed uh, in the time frame that the funding is available all right let me ask Anthony, you this in light of that let me ask you this is is it possible that we could uh, call a special meeting uh, to expedite action uh, after after a thorough analysis of mr. Senate's plan is completed the answer there is yes Anthony informed us that he has no problem with waiting till the uh, next scheduled meeting which is the 18th he feels that you're jeopardizing permits that have been issued that are about to expire if you go into December. So I believe your options are Mayor 3, <clears throat> 1, to do something this evening, 2, call a special call meeting before the 18th, 3, have this as an agenda item on the 18th. Well, I certainly want to honor uh, my fellow council members' request, you know, to be, allow them the opportunity to participate in any action that is taken on this matter so uh, if that would be the case that we would just have to call a special meeting to, to address this one item and that's what we need to do uh, I yield and, that and do it within the within time you know a reasonable time frame that would allow us to accomplish what needs to be done yes, you know sir. as far as goals are concerned and again um, if if the proposal mr. Senate is going to discuss with us Monday is the proposal he presented to you in this public hearing on October 14th, that objective analysis has been done. It's just a matter of further reviewing and understanding any questions he has. Correct. But I, I fully understand that. Uh, again, you know, in, in all respect to Congressman Jones, you know, he, he has asked me to do this and 
I feel like it's a reasonable gesture on our part to make that uh, analysis of Mr. Senate's plan and before we take any further action on the matter. Uh, and I, I feel that you know, as long as it doesn't impede, you know, our ability to be able to complete the project one way or the other, then, you know, I, I think it's a reasonable, uh, I wouldn't say concession, but a, a, a reasonable accommodation. accommodation. Yes. yes, sir. I'll be happy to answer other questions. Otherwise, we turn it over to you for deliberation. Any questions of Dr. Woodruff? No. Okay. Mayor Phillips, I'm, I'll make a motion to um, defer the rezoning map amendment um, to uh, either a special meeting and or on our next meeting date of the 18th. I'll second that if he's making the motion in reference to the Greenway and trail location. Yes, okay. that's what we're on. Yeah. You used the term map amendment. Yeah. Oh, did I? I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Too many pizzas in the oven. Yeah. <laughs> I apologize. Any, any other any I discussion? <laughs> I was looking at the legislative map amendment. Discussion. Okay. And thank you for allowing me the, the time to do that. I'm categorically opposed to delaying this any further. This has been about process. That's what we're supposed to be about process. We've utilized the process. And this is not part of a process. And if the vote is not taken tonight, I would urge council to not set a special meeting, but to go ahead and vote on it on the 18th, uh, even in my absence. and. Um, Councilman Washington can speak for herself, but I, I'd be comfortable with that and I'm prepared to say what I um, feel right now. Okay. Um, we've heard from a lot of people who are connected to, in various ways to our memorial garden. Um, I have a family member on the Vietnam Memorial I was a Marine. I served on the Beautification and Appearance Board back in the 80s um, when um, a lot of this materialized. I was a um, captain in the, in the Marine Corps and uh, was appointed to the Beautification and, and Appearance uh, Commission at that time. And. Um, we also had a tree board, and the tree board was responsible for honoring our citizens with uh, dedicated trees. And when um, the Beirut incident happened, the response of the city was to be as supportive as possible, and uh, the tree board decided to um, initiate the, the tree garden. And that evolved into this effort of the Beirut Memorial. And I wanted to visit the memorial again today. I just wanted to um, see Miss Downs uh, Memorial. Because uh, Doris Downs was a special person and she served on the um, Beautification and Appearance Commission for years and the tree board. and. She was um, critical. She was a very key player in the effort to build that memorial. That was part of a process. And it started um, way back in the 80s. And those people, you know, I counted um, some things about my experience that are um, special as it relates to um, the Beirut Memorial. Uh, now I'd like to discount that experience because it's not about pulling rank. It's not about um, who um, our relationships um, to that wall and, and being a veteran. Because a lot of people who uh, committed um, 
contributed to that effort, um, they hadn't lost anyone. They were trying to be good citizens of this community and honor our fallen heroes, uh, as well as honor the military institutions. So they were involved in the process. And they weren't trying to make political decisions. They just wanted to do the right thing. For me, this is not about etiquette. It's about process, a process that started a long time ago with the, the right stakeholders in this community, our military um, volunteer organizations, our staff that worked hard on this process. And, you know, it's not about etiquette. We've invited um, the congressman to come. Um, and the meeting on Monday is not with the congressman. It's with uh, staff. I've been blessed to serve um, with a lot of good um, men and wo women. And one thing that I enjoy about uh, city government is that it's nonpartisan. We don't play politics. We just look at the facts and try to make the best decision that we can off the facts. And we utilize a process. But I haven't spoken to Congressman Jones uh, personally, but I think that I'm feeling pressure to um, make a, a decision that's not consistent with just looking at the facts and trying to do the right thing that's in the pu public interest. Talking about that process, I defer to the process. I had no um, determination on where this trail should go. For me, because I was involved with Rails to Trails at the inception in this community, and it was just about the connectivity of our trails. Service members met, use uh, our trails to, to bike, uh, to work. It was about the connectivity. It was um, the quality of life um, improvement for the community. I would have been happy if it had gone any way it needed to go. I had no predeterminations as long as it connected. But we get into, and, and I trusted the process to do that. I wasn't that involved in it. I trusted our boards, our advisory uh, community. And when somebody made a comment at the public hearing about um, if we didn't decide a particular way, we weren't a caring community. Well, I know all about that too. And um, we earned that. It, that was a description of the community. It wasn't a goal, something that we had as, as, aspired to. That was what we were doing. We showed that in, in 1992 when we got the All-America City recognition. It was because we were a caring community, not because we aspired to be one. So we are that. And um, the discussion turned to whether bikes were being disrespectful to our monuments. You know, one of our most respected heroes is, is George Washington. The Mount Vernon Parkway is a bike and pedestrian trail that starts at George Washington's home and goes to Arlington Cemetery, a bike trail. And we've already been presented um, the video of the bike trails that wind through um, East Potomac and West Potomac Park in Washington, D.C., through the, through the monuments. And one comment was that, well, we don't even need the trail. Um, just don't go through the Memorial Gardens. And I, I beg to differ with that. 
um, we do need the connectivity of, of our trails for our quality of life concerns. And we do need um, the trail at this location. Um, the bike, tr and then there was a comment about, um, we don't care what other communities are doing. Well, we might, because we don't want to reinvent the wheel. And I found it interesting that we can show a lot of examples where um, the bike trail is no kind of dis distraction to our memorials and our, and our monuments. But I've yet to hear one example of when the bike trail has been problematic, has called, caused any kind of problem for any kind of monument, not one example. And so um, I think if it's good enough for George Washington and if it's good enough to get you to Arlington Cemetery, um, I think that the connectivity of this is, is important enough that, that we do what um, the process has produced. Nothing against Congressman Jones. Like him, met him, and um, complimented him because I did think he, he took um, strong stands and um, crossed party lines to do it. But this is just not the issue that we should defer away from our process. I've been to Congressman Jones' office, and because we do the Congressional Cities Conference uh, once a year, and we, they set it up so we meet the, the, legisl the legislators, our representatives. And um, we go with an agenda, and we ask him to do things. But we expect him to look at the facts and make a determination in the best interest. We ought to have that same respect, that we can look at the facts. And, and make a, a decision uh, out of our best interest. And we had the public hearing, but we had already had all of these processes that go back to the inception of the rails and trails, where there were opportunities for public comment and public participation on these boards and, and, and commissions. And People invested their time in doing that. And uh, our staff did an excellent job, Mike Elsey. And I don't think it's part of a good process where we're backed up against time deadlines that impact the viability of the project, impact funding, and with alternatives that people just keep coming at us with that require additional funding for certain, and there's no discussion, no suggestion on where that funding is coming from to um, build a 150-foot walkway with railings, fill. It's just that I think that when we step out of the process and um, I have no reservations, no doubts that the right decision is going to be made. So I'm not questioning anybody's decision. But I think that it's a disservice in and of itself to step out of the process that has been going, going on for as long as this process has with all of the stakeholders. And so I'm just at the point where if somebody wants to suggest that um, there can be repercussions because um, we don't step out of that process, then to me, there, there, that is really offensive. And it offends the process. It offends those veterans organizations, that came, the stakeholders that came before us and spoke in favor of, of what we're trying to do. And so, um, 
what I really would like to hear, and I think what the veterans would really like to hear from Congressman Jones, is how did Wilmington get the Veterans Hospital? When we have all these veterans here, and the needs that we have here, and Wilmington got the Veterans Hospital. That's my concern for Congressman Jones, and that was something that came from them, and we, I've been here, I've been in his office while that was in the works, and I never knew anything about it, and I don't think anybody up here knew that that was happening or that we could have in, um, made input into that. And that's a process that I'd like to have a conversation with Congressman Jones about. So that's all I'd like to say. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Willingham. Does anyone else have a, any discussion? Yeah, I'll throw my two cents worth in. <clears throat> First of all, I'd compliment the staff when this route was first proposed. I think they did all their homework. They worked with the Beirut Advisory Committee, the veterans groups, told them what the route was and so forth, uh, got their concurrence, and it looked like it was a done deal. A few citizens objected to the proposed route on the premise that it was going to be disrespectful to the memorial. I think that I can understand the emotional ties some people have to that memorial. I have an emotional tie to it just as a veteran and hope that the message carries forth to citizens, non-military people about what America is all about and why people sacrifice their lives for the good of this country. But <clears throat> We did our due diligence in terms of contacting all these groups. And at the request of Council, or Congressman Jones, in spite of all the homework we did contacting all these groups, we acceded to his request to have a <coughs> public hearing. That public hearing was emotional for a lot of people, including myself. But at the same time, it was very revealing that 98% whatever it was of the people who spoke, spoke in favor of the path on the premise that it wasn't being disrespectful. In fact, it was opening up those memorials for more people to be able to view them, to think about them, and to think what they mean to this country. Uh, what are we gaining by meeting with Mr. Senate to go over a plan that is anything different than what's been proposed and what's been analyzed that's going to be costlier, uh, <clears throat> less attractive, certainly not conducive to bringing people, more people into the community. Uh, we've been down that rot. I would suggest that if anyone harbors a thought that the meeting with Mr. Senate went next week yes. is going to involve pulling a rabbit out of the hat and, and showing us a rot that hasn't been analyzed. I doubt it, but I'd say this. Let's keep that possibility open by meeting, but at the same time, let's not lose time. Let's authorize the staff to go to bid on this. <coughs> Mr. Senate pulls out a rabbit out of the hat, we can always have a special meeting to pull back on the bidding. But in the meantime, as Mr. Willingham says, Let's go ahead with the process that we've established. We've covered all bases. Um, we've done due diligence in terms of contacting everyone that has a stake in the Memorial Gardens and, and people who have a direct attachment to that wall. And they've support this route. I support the route. Um, I don't want to consider another route that takes the opportunity for more people to participate in seeing that memorial, which is what is being proposed to take it along Highway 24 in conflict with all the traffic going down there. I said my piece. Here, just very quickly, uh, we don't need to echo 
I guess what's been said already because it's all factual. But I think the, the thing that we have to remember is the funding aspect of this project and that the funding was acquired through the old formula and with the help of our representatives and that I can assure you we have looked at all the other, not maybe, we have. We have looked at all the other options. And I can assure you that there are other options. But at this point, the city would have to open up the bank account and write a check for the difference to the tune of approximately $600,000 or more. And this funding cycle will not reopen for that particular project, in my opinion. So all the studies have been completed. All the stakeholders have been involved. It has been a long process, as we indicated, and all made available to the public. And 90% of the stakeholders are in favor. And I am also in favor of moving this project forward, but at the respect of the congressman and the mayor, I have no problem delaying it for the said period. But as we indicated earlier, I don't see anything coming forward unless we are willing to substantially support a brand new project in full to the tune of close to a million dollars. Anyone else? And I think I made that clear in my opening uh, statement about the financial end of it. You know, whatever plan gets put forward by Mr. Senate when you all meet on Monday, there'll have to be a financial analysis done. And if it's outside the parameters of, uh, of what, you know, then that's automatically a, a problematic shall we say but I trust that y'all will work you know close take a good close look at it as per request of uh, congressman Jones he's asked me to ask me that favor and I feel that it's something that we can do uh, t to uh, to honor his request and I appreciate council's uh, support in that uh, in that matter so we have a motion and a second in this Yes. Yes, we yes. do. And the motion was it, well, alternate understand. motion in order. You have a no. motion you need to deal with first on the table. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Well, well, restate the motion, please. Okay. Would you read back the motion, please? My motion was to defer, defer the Lejeune Greenway and Trail location decision to either a special meeting or the meeting of the 18th as required based on the information that, that we collect. Seconded by second was come from Mr. Yes. 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 Yeah, Thomas. I, I remember that. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Aye. No. And I'm going to vote to uh, Thank you. in favor of the motion. So. So by the 18th, we're uh, probably the 18th meeting. I think Mr. Willingham said that uh, uh, he didn't have to be present to win, right? Or, or be present to vote. Okay. So is that good with you, Ms. Washington? Okay. All right. We now have some appointments to the Onslow Civic Affairs uh, Committee. And I've, how many uh, how many openings do we have? Has anybody got theirs open? Four, four openings. Uh, council member Jerry Bittner is the council liaison to the Oslo Civic Affairs Committee, and I'll turn to you now, Mr. Bittner, for any nominations that you might have for those positions. All right, thank you very much. One of my nominees has been patiently sitting in the audience, a very diligent member of the Civic Affairs Committee, and I applaud your patience for sitting through, although I think she just wanted to make sure that I was going to nominate her, <laughs> which I am, to seat nine in Oliver Hill, to seat 10 in 
uh, authorize the appointment of Will Artis to seat 11 for a term to expire September 30th, 2016, and Cindy Edwards to seat 14 for an unexpired term ending September 30th, 2015. Any other nominations? I move the nominations be closed and accept by applicant acclamation. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. second. Okay. Any discussion? All, all, right. all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right. So that brings us to our last ses session of public comment for the evening. Anybody else come in since I uh, called the last session? All right. So we're going to go to the reports now. And then I'm going to start with Mr. Willingham. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. With all the discussion about the trails, I just happened to think of former Councilman Horace Mann. And I just wanted to thank him for the work that he put in on the um, pedestrian overpass. He got a lot of criticism for that. And I think that um, history has um, uh, exonerated uh, that position. So thank, thank you, uh, Horace. Nothing further. Thank you. Mr. Bedner? I just want to say, Mayor, that I think in terms of my vote on the motion, uh, I'd like to always follow the lead of the mayor because the mayor is the elected head of this city government and this council. But I think in this particular case, Councilman Jones put you in an awkward position uh, in spite of all the facts and evidence pointing for a different, different response. So I just wanted to say that. No report, Mayor. Mr. Warden. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this evening, uh, I got the opportunity to attend a presentation from Lowe's Food. As you, you may recall, they're the newest uh, grocery store here in town and they made a four thousand dollar food contribution to our food bank local the community that's outreach that's ministry that's so wonderful. on behalf of the city I uh, wanted to say thank you to Lowe's Foods for being a good corporate citizen and, and thank you for helping those in our community who, who are in need and much appreciated thank you thank you it's all mr. mayor uh, sure thank you Sammy uh, mayor Phillips just wanted to mention I stopped by the City Hall last Friday. I had a problem with my iPad, and I don't think this thing is working either. You just gave me, but <laughs> I ended up going to IT, and they said uh, it was kind of early in the afternoon, about mid afternoon, and they said, Well, you just missed Charles, Charles Stallings. And they said, Yeah, he was, he was having kind of a rough day. He decided to kick out early. Well, it turns out I said, What's the problem? Well, he actually retired. <laughs> Friday was his last day, uh, nearly 30 years. Uh, local boy made good started with the city back in 1985 probably programming COBOL or something like that <laughs> but he was uh, <laughs> Commodore he was, uh, 64 he stayed with us the whole time uh, I think that's pretty impressive you know for probably the only job he's ever had and I can imagine it was uh, kind of emotional for him and uh, I just wanted to recognize him I didn't see him you know he didn't come to didn't quite make the 30 years, I guess, with our last presentation, so we didn't get to see him. And Good boy. Just thought we could uh, remember Charles. He's done a great job. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Ray. Amen. Appreciate that. Amen. Ms. Washington. I have a couple of announcements that I want to make. The first announcement that I want to make that on October the 25th, on behalf of you, Mayor Phillips, and the Jacksonville City Council, I had an opportunity to attend the Shriners, the um, Arabian Temple 42 um, Potentate Ball this past weekend. I had an opportunity to present the city proclamation to this organization and had, an um, had the opportunity also to attend the ball at the American Legion building. And it was a very interesting gathering. Um, many of our local city officials as well as those individuals that were running for office was in attendance and the ball was basically presented by individuals not only stateside but the farthest individual was one lady from the um, company um, excuse me the country of japan so it was a very interesting gathering for this particular organizations and they were able to present two fifteen hundred dollar scholarships to aspiring individuals within the community 
community. So that was a, um, a real highlight. Also, I had an opportunity on Halloween night to do a police ride along with um, Sergeant Charles Torman. Um, so I became like part of the police force and um, just had an opportunity to see what our men and women in blue do for our city. Believe it or not, Mayor Phillips, it was pretty much a quiet night in Jacksonville. I was with um, Sergeant Torman from 7 p.m. He picked me up from my house um, basically until about 1 o'clock in the morning. So I did like a six-hour shift. I was doing very well up until the point we stopped at Dunkin Donuts and I think the sugar kind of just pushed me overboard <laughs> after 1 p.m. 1 o'clock and I think if he wouldn't have said anything to me it was my vision to hang in there for eight hour shift and to hang out with him until 3 p.m. but that sugar was just hitting me and after working a full day I just couldn't hang anymore but it was a wonderful experience it enlightened me not only as a city council person but but just as a private citizen, just what our men and women in blue do on a daily basis for the city of Jacksonville. Um, we did have one particular incident. We had a rollover accident on Western Boulevard, and thank God that nobody was injured or killed. There was one individual who was transported to the hospital, but even while EMS was rendering services to this young lady, it appeared that her injuries were at minimal, very limited. But to also see our Jacksonville Police Department, the Jacksonville Fire Department, and Onslow County EMS coming together functioning as one team, not trying to pull rank over one organization or the other, but just to see them as a cohesive team working for the citizens in Onslow County was just unbelievable. So thank you to those individuals and especially to um, Sergeant Torman for letting me accompany him and to be quote unquote a little police officer for the night or the morning or however you want to put it but um, my councilman if you've never gone on a ride along I would strongly encourage you to go we didn't make it to Greenville but we stayed here in Jacksonville so that was a good thing so I had a wonderful time my last um, report that I want to give is from the Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee. Many of you know that um, this particular committee started a Jacksonville Holiday Home Decorating Contest. So the first contest was for Halloween and that has now come to an end. There was many um, entries and the next um, recognition for these uh, for the winner will be presented at our next City Council meeting which will be on November the 9th. 18th and so Mr. Hargett or Mrs. Carmelo George will be standing in my stead to present that particular award along with the mayor. Also it is now time for the Thanksgiving holiday celebration so um, please go to the city website to get those rules and regulations but one of the rules submission is that your house has to be decorated by November 30th if you want to be eligible for the Thanksgiving um, Day Award. So please, if you're thinking about decorating your homes, please make sure that um, you take advantage of this. The other caveat to that is that you must reside within the city limits of Jacksonville. So having meeting those two major criteria, along with other instructions on the website that you will find, we encourage everyone to please participate in this particular holiday contest. And that's my report. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Willingham, you had something to add. Thank you, um, Mayor. I had an opportunity to go by Jack Amy at Recreation Center, and I just want to commend the council, the staff, and Recreation Department. That is a beautiful looking ballpark. Some of you have already seen it, but um, it made me want to go get my baseball club. <laughs> um, also at Kerr Street, uh, the new fencing, the um, uh, painting of the basketball court really just looks perfect. Thank you. Mr. Bittner, you had something to add also. Well, as I gave my reporter nominations on civic affairs, I had this uncomfortable feeling as somebody has beat me on the back, and it's Glenn Hargett who has eyes all over this city. And I know he was saying, you forgot to tell him about the rededication of the Freedom Fountain tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Guess where it's going to be? Freedom. Okay. <laughs> 
Thank you very much. Thank you for bringing that up. I'm sure that Dr. Woodruff would have covered that in his report <laughs> had you forgotten. Um, I, I, mine's short, very short. I had an opportunity Monday along with our deputy city manager, uh, Ron Massey, uh, to, uh, we had an invitation from uh, Major General uh, Bidler at the, uh, the commander of the second Marine Expeditionary Force at Camp Lejeune to uh, visit with them at the MEF headquarters there. And uh, uh, we also took with us the chief of police. We took uh, uh, the chairman of the Onslow County Board of County Commissioners, Paul Buchanan. And we also had uh, General Wilson, Cornell Will Wilson, who's the uh, governor's uh, military advisor. And uh, we had a very enjoyable day. You know, I, uh, we uh, went out, we got a briefing. Uh, and the one thing, and the reason I'm, I'm bringing this up, uh, I'll tell you about the fun stuff here real quick. Um, you know, it culminated with a briefing and a, and a lunch, uh, a little lunch, and we sat and we, in an informal setting. And then we uh, left the, uh, the lunch hall there at the uh, uh, officers club and we went to WPT Field, Hill Field out there, boarded a, uh, M8, uh, M, I guess it's an MH-60 Navy helicopter and uh, flew out about 60 miles due east out into the Atlantic Ocean and landed on the USS Kearsars, a Navy amphibious assault ship and uh, went for a, a tour of that ship and all the capabilities uh, uh, that are uh, that the Navy has to provide support to our Marines. Uh, but getting back, uh, it was fun. A lot of fun, and if you go to my Facebook page, you'll see a couple pictures I posted on there that I took from the helicopter. You know, even though I was a, I was a little nervous about it, I have to admit that. Uh, and it's real loud; you can't talk. You know, you can't even have a conversation on them because it so, makes so much noise. But uh, anyway, uh, the one thing I did had accomplished by the end of that day was a better understanding of what our folks in uniform do out there in the defense of this country. It's not. It's not an easy business. It's a very complicated, intri in, a lot of intricacies in, involved in it. The planning, the way things are, the way they staff things, uh, the way they deploy their assets, it's just amazing uh, what they do that we don't know about. Uh, you know, as, as, through our normal uh, routine lives, we, we don't understand what goes into it. But now I have a little bit better understanding of it. Not that I, not that I'm going to run out and enlist or anything like that. But you know, my hats off to them folks for doing the job that they do, and they are to be commended because they are. Uh, uh, you know, it's nice to know that we got those folks out there guarding our freedom. Um, the other thing is, I, I just uh, uh, want to remind everybody, and I'm sure you would have done this too that Saturday morning is the Veterans Parade, okay? Roll, our Rolling Thunder chapter here, chapter five, uh, kind of host the, uh, um, the, uh, uh, the Veterans Parade. And uh, we uh, uh, expect a real good turnout this year. It's usually a, good, a pretty good uh, uh, parade. It draws a lot of folks out. You would think in a military town more people would come out to honor the veterans on, uh, at the Veterans Parade. I'd like to see more come to that than the Holiday Parade. Maybe one, one of these days we'll, we'll do that. But please, if you, if you, don't, ha if you got, uh, don't have any plans for Saturday, come on out on Western Boulevard and, and see the parade. You'll get to see a lot, of, uh, uh, you know, a lot of floats, a lot of our armed forces folks out there, and uh, I'm sure that they would very much appreciate, you know, the community coming out and supporting them. The other thing I was going to mention was about the, uh, uh, the deal with the uh, with the trail. Um, again, uh, I know that we have a, we have a plan in place, okay. But in my respect to the to the office of Congress, the position of a congressman of the United States. I have been asked, I was asked to, to, you know, ask the council not to act on this tonight. I, I thank you very much. Uh, you, of those of you that didn't vote in favor of that motion, I understand your vote and why you voted the way you did. Um, but you know, with all due respect to, to the congressman, 
Uh, I appreciate uh, the sport and being able to do this. Uh, but it's like we said, it's going to have to be a plan that works for Jacksonville. And I made it quite clear to the congressman that I'm look, my goal is to look out for the best interest of the citizens of Jacksonville. That is my goal. If it's going to, if it's going to add additional cost, if it's not going to accomplish what we, you know, what was the intent of the folks that you're talking about, Council Member Willingham, the people that actually got in on the grassroots of this, the, the stakeholders that were involved and have been involved through this process, then this plan, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's going to have to be a workable plan, okay, and, and work for the good of ensuring that these monuments are visible and that more people are attracted to this area. That's the whole purpose of, of, of doing this. But um, anyway, I'm going to quiet down. Now, one more thing. Uh, I do want to say a little special uh, uh, commendation again to those folks that uh, went through the Citizens Academy and appreciate them doing that. Uh, uh, that's, I think it's a, a really great program the city offers and, you know, what, you know, maybe we're developing some future leaders here in the city, you know, you know, given, uh, giving them a better understanding of what we do here, what the city is responsible for, you know, may perk some interest in people becoming involved in public service. So now I will defer to you, Dr. Wood, and your report. Mayor, members of council, today Ron Massey and I had the privilege to attend the birthday celebration of the Marines. I'd like to read you just two comments out of the program. On November 10, 1775, a Corps of Marines was created by resolution of the Continental Congress. On November 1, 1921, John A. Lejeune, 13th Commandant of the Marine Corps, directed that a reminder of the honorable service of the Corps be published by every command to all Marines throughout the globe on the birthday of the Corps. Today, it was indeed our honor to represent you and the council and this city in attending the 239th birthday celebration. Let us all remember that while Tuesday is Veterans Day, that Monday is the 239th birthday of the Marine Corps. With that, as the mayor said, the parade begins in front of Coastal Carolina Community College, Western Boulevard, 10 a.m. on Saturday. We hope that you will turn out. This is not about candy for the children. It is about recognizing the sacrifice that freedom demands and many give freely. Tomorrow evening, we will also have a, an observance beginning at 6 p.m. right next door at the Freedom Fountain. It will be the first evening ceremony Colonel Lewis, who was recognized this evening with the Citizen Academy, will be the guest speaker, and we would encourage people to come. It will be a beautiful evening weather-wise. Mr. Bittner has guaranteed that the weather is going to be uh, generally chilly, but not cold. But there is a possibility of rain. <laughs> That's your department. Typical, typical Mr. Bittner, <laughs> trying to rain on our parade. Our parade. <laughs> <laughs> Two other quick notes. Because Tuesday is Veterans Day, city offices will be closed. That will mean that the sanitation schedule will be modified. Monday route as normal. Tuesday route will occur on Wednesday. Thursday and Friday routes will be as normal. No yard waste collected this coming week. The last thing that we would like to mention to everyone is on Highway 17, right downtown, where the Center for Public Safety is being built, soon to be occupied. Right now we're moving evidence in. The traffic light is now operational. We had several people run that light today. <laughs> we don't want anybody to get hurt, but it is operational. So when you come over the Phillips Bridge and you're headed into town, be prepared to stop. And again, Court Street is now open for traffic, and we commend Wally Hansen for the excellent job he has done in uh, shepherding that project. With that, Mayor and Council, as always, it's a privilege to work with you and this staff and the Council, and we appreciate what you and the Council are leading us to. 
Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Woodruff. Mr. Carter? No report, Mayor. Thank you. All right, with that, uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Someone. All in favor? All right, second. <laughs>